That sounds so ominous. Leibniz's cosmological argument. German philosopher Gottfried Wilhelm Leibniz. He's the uh, came up with the idea of best of all possible worlds. This is, and that actually will come into play later. He's the inventor of calculus. Who's the other inventor? Newton. Newton. And they did it at the same time, though uh, they got accused of plagiarizing each other, but they didn't. And when I was in Vienna, I found his house. I wasn't looking for it. I was just walking around. There's a little blue plaque. Leibniz lived here, except it was in German or something, you know. And I said, well, how cool is that? So he also invented the philosophical thing, sufficient reason. Everything that exists has an explanation of its existence. Hey, there's no cinnamon roll breakfast. No. You freak me out, man. What? I I saw no cinnamon roll breakfast. We've got breakfast for you right there. And so I get your text after I've just spent 50 bucks getting this stuff. I'm going, are you kidding me? I'm eating my whatever these things are called. The number four, right? So everything that exists has an explanation. It's the key to this whole argument. All right, and so let's jump in. Number one, here's the argument. Everything that exists has an explanation of its existence. If the universe has an explanation of its existence, that explanation is God. It's gotta be bigger than the thing. That, the cause has gotta be bigger than the thing is the idea. The universe does in fact exist. The universe does have an explanation of its existence. Therefore, the explanation of the universe's existence is God. In other words, God exists. And you're going, okay. It's kind of people's reaction to that. I see a lot of words, it's not quite clicking. Let's go through it. Everything that exists has an explanation of its existence. The typical atheistic response then, God must have an explanation of its existence. Who created God is the way they're going to say it. And um, what do you think the response to that is? What's your response to that? You open your pop and you leave. Okay. Um, I don't have an explanation. He always well, has been. He always is. He always has been. You have to go back and you have to redefine premise one. No, there are things that in fact just exist because they have to necessarily. Um, a typical example is the idea of numbers. Numbers have to be, even if it's just an idea. But God would fall into that category. And then there are things that are produced with some external cause, which is the vast majority of things. It's the cause. So we have to go back and rewrite premise one. Everything that exists has an explanation of its existence, either in the necessity of its own nature or an external cause. You get, it starts, when you first encounter this, it sounds a little bit like special pleading. It doesn't, it's not, but special pleading is you make it, well, it's true except for this particular case that I want to deal with. Well, God must have an explanation of his existence. But whatever caused God would be God. So if you came up with a cause for God, that would be God. And so therefore, it's circular. You end up with there is a God. Because if your definition of God gets caused with something else, that turns out to be God. God doesn't have a cause by definition. And you can see why atheists are. So back to premise one, science does not matter. What is he talking about? So you're walking in the, you've heard the argument, you're walking on the beach and you find a watch. You know, this is not that. Oh, you're walking on the beach and you find a watch. It's natural to assume that doesn't look like a rock. That looks like it's manufactured and it has function. So there's a cause to that watch. That's that argument, which is why um, 
uh, Dawkins wrote his book, The Blind Watchmaker, because it's a pretty strong argument. And the idea is the universe obviously looks designed, ergo, and that we're going to deal with that in the teleological argument. So therefore, there must be a watchmaker. Well, here it's, if you find a ball in the forest, you go, I don't even know what that's made of, but that's not like the stuff that's around here and it's just there. Um, it didn't just pop into just something made that because it's just, it's not like anything else. And then the argument is, well, let's just make it bigger. If you say it just exists, that doesn't suffice. No, <laughs> it's a freaking glass ball. No. And suppose the ball, you keep making the ball bigger. Well, what if it's not just a ball? What if it's the size of a car or a house or a continent, a planet, a universe? It still needs an explanation point. This is what they're trying to say is the universe just exists and go, no, you don't get a blue ball with no explanation. And the universe falls into that category. So now I put up here the taxi cab fallacy. Let me go through this. Atheists will say everything in the universe has an explanation, but not the universe itself. And Arthur Schopenhauer, a philosopher, German philosopher in the 1800s, you can't get rid of premise one, everything has an explanation. Like a taxi, once you get to the place where you want to be, you don't get just to dismiss it. You don't get to exempt the universe. Further, and this is where it gets tricky, atheists are usually like pro-science. All of scientific cosmology is seeking an explanation for the universe. And then you want to go ahead and exempt the universe? And that's a curiously unscientific attitude. Oh, no. No, 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 no. What do you think the Big Bang's all about? An explanation for the universe. So no, what do you think? Multiverse, all that. It's trying to explain, then you can say it just doesn't have one. No. Well, it's impossible for the universe to have an explanation. Why? Well, this is a defense against the taxi cab fallacy. It's not that it doesn't have one, we're gonna exempt it. It's impossible for it to have one. What's the argument? Any explanation of the universe would have to be a prior state when the universe didn't exist. Which would be nothingness. And nothingness is not an exp explanation. So the universe must exist without an explanation. Well, no, you don't get to do that. Because you're assuming that the universe is all there is. You've kind of assumed your argument. It's called begging the question. The explanation of the universe is a prior state. But it's not nothingness. It's God. It's that prior state. <laughs> Moving on to premise two. <laughs> I love Matt. He's just sitting there. Why am I here? Why are we doing this in Sunday school? Can't we talk about the problems of teenagers? <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah, it's remarkable. If the universe has an explanation of its existence, that explanation is God. And again, because whatever the explanation is, it has to be outside the universe. A cause is external to its reaction, okay? Its product. When I build a gun, I'm not part of the gun. I'm external to the gun. I don't know what, let's make it more feasible. When I make a sausage roll, I'm not part of the sausage roll. I used to do this in, at Oreo. All my examples were violent. <laughs> Students would go, why, why do people have to die in your example? <laughs> Atheists argue that if atheism is true, the universe has no explanation of its existence. This is their argument against premise one, the universe just exists. In other words, if, if atheism is true, ergo there's no God, there is no explanation for the universe. Hmm. It just exists inexplicably. Well, the Big Bang hadn't entered into this yet, okay. but 
Well, no. I mean, here's Stephen Hawking talking about it. He'll just say, it just, in the beginning, it was nothing, which exploded. Nothing and exploded. If atheism is true, the universe has no explanation of its existence. I bowl down their argument. But this is the logical equivalent of saying B, I'm just making this point B. If the universe has an explanation of existence, then atheism is not true. Think about it for a second. If atheism is true, the universe does not have an explanation. But if there's an explanation, then atheism is not true. They, they go hand in hand. And I said, all you've done is flip it. I said, you can't affirm A and deny B. You can't say, if atheism is true, the universe doesn't have an explanation. But then say, well, if there is an explanation, atheism is false. No, 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 that's not true. You don't get to do that because they're the same statement. Just flip. If the universe has an explanation of existence, then atheism is not true. But B, it's the same thing as premise one. I mean, premise two. If the universe has an explanation of its existence, that explanation is God. All we did is substitute that atheism is not true. If atheism is not true, then there's a God, right? If the argument there is no God is false, then you're saying there is a God. You understand that, right? Why are you looking at me like that? Meanwhile, your patient is cramping. <laughs> you gotta, would you please have a thing, Dr. I? <laughs> but it is, you see that, right? God, atheism, not true, are the same thing. If anything is not true, then you're saying there is a God. Now, the universe is all a space-time reality, including all matter and energy. It follows that the cause of the universe must not be that. It's got to be external to that. Okay, I said that earlier, but do you, you see that? It's got to be non-physical. It's got to be immaterial, because it's not matter, being beyond space and time. It's either an abstract object, like a number, or a transcendent mind. Well, you know, the number seven doesn't cause anything. So it's a transcendent mind, which is what the Christian explanation, in fact, most theistic, theistic explanations of God are. The cause of the universe must be a transcendent mind. Hmm. So the atheist goes back to premise one, everything has to have an explanation, and withdraws his explanation. Is objection. And he says the universe exists by necessity of its own nature. Because remember, those are the two options. It's either caused or it has to exist by its own nature. And so they want to come back and say, okay, yeah, the universe exists by necessity of its own nature. Gotcha, buddy. What? Right. Our response, but the universe as it is does not exists necessarily, since different elementary particles could have existed. This is not immediately clear. You can imagine a universe with different particles. Instead of quark, something else. You know, something else. And so it's not, there's no necessity the universe that we experience that has to be here. So it could be a different universe, and at which point, then it doesn't necessarily be has to be here, it has to be an object of creation. Are you following that? Brooke's nodding her head. Okay. If, if it's, if no other universe, but this one as it is, could exist, eh. but um, we can imagine one where that's simply not the case. So premise one stands. Everything that exists has an explanation for its existence either the necessity of its own nature, which it doesn't include the universe, or in an external cause. So now we're down to this. If the universe has an explanation of existence, that explanation is God. The universe exists. The universe is not there necessarily of its own being, so therefore it has to have an explanation of its existence. That's point four. This follows from one and two. It has to have an explanation that explanation has to be God. And the reason why it follows is because we're saying it's not in the necessity of its own nature. 
It has to have a cause. And any cause of the universe would have to be God by definition. Therefore, the explanation of the universe's existence is God. And that follows from two and four, or um, three and four, actually. But I typoed. I wanted to say, no, I got to write two and four. And we finished in record time. 10.07, so you guys can go. Well, next week, we're going to do the Kalam cosmological argument, which is actually simpler than Leibniz's argument. Um, and we'll see. But this is, the cosmological argument is powerful. Yeah, the, either the universe exists because it has to, or something caused it. And once you have something caused it, the only thing that could cause the universe would be God. Like all that exactly right, right. they because they, if they can if, if they can you know prove the multiverse whole situation and they can just start going in it like well why would god have created this one and be, because by having multiple universes then it proves that well the, with the multiverse they're usually trying to say the universe has always existed and it's only that our specific one has a beginning. Right. Believe it or not, we are going to deal with that eventually. But it really looks like gymnastics to try to avoid the obvious conclusion, especially since by definition, we have no interaction with those other universes. Right. They're purely theoretical. Right. And that's why I think that their theory could combat the fact that they need it's exactly right. And so they go, huh? Well, so next week, I'm assuming, we don't have, don't don't text me with cinnamon breakfast the last thing. Did anybody else see that? Who's Tara? She was handing out coffee. Okay, where's our, uh, would somebody go grab the breakfast list? Janie, do you have the breakfast list? Would you run go get that Tom right quick? I don't think anybody signed up for next week. Hang it on the wall. You know, over where we keep the donuts. So, uh, all right, so we'll do the Kalam. That one's going to take a while because this is where we're going to talk Big Bang. So we're going to be in that for a while, talking about the various parts of it. The argument itself is very simple, but talking about the different, all those things, because people are going to ask, well, what's this multiverse crap? What's string theory? What about the, so we're going to talk about? And hopefully we won't freak people out. Bruce and Sally Ann will still come. Is your wife there, Mari? Where yeah, is she? Yeah, everybody's here. Yep. Where are they? They're on the other side of the camera. Oh. <laughs> you yeah, okay with listening? I got the laptop in, in my, on my lap with the wall behind me, but everyone else is here. Is Teague in your class? All right, so tell Teague that um, Janie's going to quiz her. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll tell her to get brushed up for it. So <laughs> yeah. she's smiling. Okay, so next Saturday, around two o'clock, what we're just going to say to, and um, Brooke is going to put us on the group me page, the address, and we'd over there. It's not going to take long. We're unloading one you all. The smallest U Haul they have, but apparently it's like furniture and stuff. Okay, so we need some manly men. And then uh, we have Celebrate Recovery Saturday night that somehow fell in Renee's lap. It's going to be in Florida. I don't know how she's going to do that, but she's going to order everything online, she said. And I'm assuming Kevin will bring them. 
and then uh, we'll come over there and do that. And then we have Sunday school. Did uh, what? Did you? I don't think anybody signed up for next week. No, we don't have donuts for next week. Okay, apparently we're gonna do cinnamon roll. <laughs> anyway, uh, donuts is open if anybody wants to volunteer for that. Now you guys should just stay at the lake all summer. Yeah, for weekends. Um, yeah, the, uh, the kids work Thursday through Sunday. So we're here those dates and when I'm not traveling, you know, they're in Tulsa Monday through Wednesday kind of thing. But this week we've actually got Jennifer's family is visiting. They arrived today, staying for the week. And uh, so I'm gonna see if I can work out being there on Saturday um, to help out with you know, celebrating recovery and, and the movie. Oh. Yep. So I'll see if, okay. if we can that out. All right, well, let's close with prayer. Um, Sally Ang. Wait, no, I can't call on your mom. She doesn't like to talk. Though she's gotten more comfortable, you know. She likes to point out when you're pulling into the parking lot because she has you on her find my phone. So, um, Jeff Hunt, would you close us in prayer, please? Lord, thank you for uh, time we could spend this morning learning more about you and some of these challenges that we face. Those who uh, have struggles to read and read you and your Give us wisdom, give John wisdom as he tries to explain these things to us. Help us to be open hearts and ears to learn and really be able to answer these questions and more folks uh, really questioning and want to know. Uh, give us wisdom, give us love. Fight uh, against these folks because they're just what we do. Guide us now throughout the rest of this day with Pastor Daniel. Be with each one that here, those that can't be here, and to do this wonderful thing. Amen. All right, so we'll call it a day. See y'all next week. Thanks, Don. Yep.